Sup guys, Alex of Nothing Box TV here, and I have a question for you. Have you seen part one and two of my Jack and Daxter trilogy game box special? It will destroy you, just- So after defeating Metal Core, destroy the child, corrupt them all, you find Jack, Daxter, and Pecker getting banished? Alex, yeah. you said they wouldn't yeah, do that. Yeah, I did say that. And also, why are you doing that stupid eye yeah, thing again? Yeah, I, I know I'm you're doing using that again. an older version of emulator, just so you can run that joke into the ground, dude. So Count Wiener, sorry, I mean Veger, <laughs> banishes you for heinous acts and crimes, crimes against, against the people. people. What crimes against the people? Oh yeah, those crimes. You find yourself, Daxter, and Pecker wandering the desert until nearly dying. The scene fades to flashbacks of simultaneous attacks from both metalheads and KG deathbots, and the people are blaming Jack because of his connection to Crew, which actually makes a little bit of sense for once. When everything fades back to reality, you find yourself getting saved by Damus and his posse just like in John Wick 3. While in Spargus City's palace, you get a new look, a new haircut, and you finally get to properly meet Damus. He tells you in order to earn a rightful place in the city, you must earn it. And earn it you do, by platforming it first, and then killing a huge amount of marauders that Spargus City has captured just for amusement. Tryouts. And now I know why you all got banished, you crazy people. Once you're allowed to explore Spargus City, you'll find it to be pretty interesting to be in for about the first few missions. But after that, you'll be longing to go back to Haven City. Some iconic areas are Damus's palace and I can't really think of anything else. Hey, look, I'm really sorry if I offended any of you hashtag Spargus for lifers but name one interesting thing to do in that city. You're right, there is one thing, and it's the cargo ship to take you back to Haven City. Also throughout the game, Damus talks a lot about not having a son and Jack not having a father. Didn't your father ever tell you to pick your battles wisely? I didn't know my father. Hey, you foreshadowing much? For the first third of the game, you'll spend most of your time dealing with leaper lizards, unlocking a dark satellite with a mysterious monk named Seam that strangely uses the PlayStation buttons. Ah uh, yes, I see the dark makers are Sony fanboys. You'll also find yourself fighting a similar dark satellite later on, collecting artifacts, and killing metalhead creatures in the desert in vehicles that I remembered being much more fun when I was 13 and older. As you progress, the story begins to pick up the pace. You glide to a volcano to discover a new dark jack power of invisibility, which gets used like once. <laughs> While Darkjack has been the main new staple of the trilogy, Jack discovers a temple and is granted Lightjack powers. So now he's a little less Linkin Park and a little more Third Eye Blind or Weezer, but we'll talk about Lightjack later. Afterwards, you reunite with Ashlyn and she asks you to come back to Haven City. You act like a total grump about it, but spoiler alert, you do it anyways. To wrap up the first third of the game, you find yourself in Mars Eco Mines to return to Haven City and find Vulgar, it's Vega in your way. He summons a precursor robot similar to the one in the precursor legacy, which is a neat little callback. Watching the hot babes prance around in their skimpy little bikinis. Stop. So you win, or you don't. It's your choice, really. However, I'm going with the timeline you do win, and you make your way back to Haven City. Dude, while you were gone, Haven City just got nay nay, dude. Nay nay! And it's obviously up to you to save everyone again, because everyone is so incompetent. Basically, the majority of the missions are you either dealing with metalheads or the KG deathbots. Speaking of death, never thought I'd say that, the new gun upgrades are pretty neato. Your arsenal has gone up from 4 to 12 by adding 3 more modifications to each of the weapons. Some highlights are the reflexor beam that turns the blaster into an even more overpowered weapon, which you'll always stick to as long as you have ammo. The best for the rest are the plasmite RPG for the scatter gun, the arc wielder for the Vulcan Fury, and the supernova for the peacemaker. And thankfully you'll be using them a bit more moderately because Nundy Dog heard our complaints, again, and this time around the game's difficulty is much more balanced just like Jack's edginess. The game increases your health as well with pieces of Mars armor that you'll obtain as you progress through the story. Two health points apiece. So no longer will you have to hear about Jack and Dark Souls in the same sentence. Instead you'll get a bunch of vehicle missions that overstay their welcome. Act 2's missions, while varied, don't have much plot going on. However, you do get to finally see Haven 2.0. Or should I say Heaven Negative 5 because just about everything is destroyed. Or currently under attack. The brand new area is New Haven, which I wish you could explore when it's not under attack. The other places that are relatively intact are the port and the industrial district. And the rest is almost completely unrecognizable, which was pretty emotionally significant to 13 and older me. This was actually one of the first games I had played that had a huge amount of visual storytelling. And I forgot how much of an impact it left on me, seeing the city I spent so much time in Jack 2, completely destroyed. Hey teenager with little gaming experience, do you remember Haven City in Jack 2, the one you were so fond of? It's annihilated and everyone thinks it's your fault! It's not my fault, I was 
finished. I didn't catch that. Also, you get to see Vin again after he died in Jack 2. Turns out he transferred his consciousness into the computers, and Dexter has to complete a strange Pac-Man-esque mission. Does this little bit feel like an afterthought? Because it was because I nearly forgot about Vin a second time. Even though the story seems extremely bleak, the further you progress through the story, the more and more important Light Jack becomes. While Dark Jack is aggressive and violent, Light Jack is passive and defensive. The precursors that sound more like Greetings, great warrior. Then 120 precursor orbs gave him abilities such as the slowing of time, healing, a bubble shield like Gibby and Apex, <laughs> and gliding, or should I say actual flying. And fun fact, even though Naughty Dog meant for this power to be for gliding only, if you activate your shield before flapping your wings again, it will reset the gliding, allowing you to fly to infinite heights and you can explore outside the map, and this remains unpatched in all versions of the game. To conclude the second act, you fight your way through the War Factory and discover that Errol is behind the KG Deathbot attacks. But he's not just Errol, he's Cyber Errol. Yes, he added another R to his name. So for those that know just a little bit of Spanish, that means his name is pronounced Errol, not Errol. Mr. Worldwide! So Errol introduces himself with a strange laugh <laughs> and reveals that his evil plan is to connect with the Dark Makers to either rule the world, destroy it? He hasn't decided, apparently. You defeat him, but he manages to escape. As the stakes rapidly increase, Jack has to defend Spargus City in the weirdest mission ever, then connect to the Dark Maker ship and destroy it. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. And then finish off the Metalhead Tower. Afterwards, you finally get to see the ruins of the Colosseum, which is one of the most eerie moments accompanied with the best music in the trilogy. You finally reach the catacombs through the palace ruins with Damus, who is killed as you find out he's your father. Dude, I had no idea. Did you have any idea that he was his dad? No, dude, they, they had no hints to that. There was no foreshadowing at all, man. That's crazy. Do you get it? Damus is Dad Samos. Very clever, Naughty Dog. With Damus' last words, he reveals that your real name is Mar. And canon-wise, he's technically not the Mar, but I think there's enough evidence that's teased that he could still be the actual Mar. But then seconds later, Count Viger gets the best moment in the entire trilogy. You seem upset. Did I tell you too late? You were the son of the great warrior Damus. Oh, and he never knew. How delightful. Dude, I hate you but I love you. You race Vigor into the catacombs and discover that the true identity of the precursors are actually Otzels. Oh my God. Goodness, Jack. This is a Christian channel, not a precursor channel. Get with the program. To be honest, when I first experienced this moment, I really hated the twist. But as I grew up, I realized that deep down the tone of this trilogy was meant to be lighthearted, even if it got pretty dark and edgy throughout most of it. I think the devs realized this and wanted to at least recalibrate the seriousness as the trilogy was reaching the end. So Count Viger gets his wish and gets turned into a precursor. Jack heads out to stop Errol and his Dark Maker robot. The final boss is a pretty cool two-phaser which incorporates a vehicle segment in the first half and a more standard boss for the second. You defeat Errol and save the world. Then Jack gets an off-screen kiss with Ashlyn. Bruh. I told you all your ships will get ruined. Everyone is celebrating in Spargus City, and the precursors tell Jack that there are many more challenges ahead, specifically the disaster that is the Lost Frontier. Then you can call me by my first name, by what my father called me, Mar. Wait, Jack is Mar? The Mar? Eventually I'm going to make a theory video on how Jack is the Mar. But that's just a theory. A box theory! Jax decides to wait on leaving with the precursors. Daxter gets pants, and Tess gets super pranked by also getting turned into an Ansel. And you may want to shave some parts. Trust me on that. How do I delete Daxter? Overall, this was a fantastic trilogy, and there really is little to complain about. However, I did mention that I really wanted to see more depth to Dark Jack, and now also Light Jack. Instead, it felt like the only mention of it was him saying, hey, I'm better now, and that was it. If Dark Jack really was an issue, perhaps after killing Metalcore in Jatu, after being exposed to more Dark Eco, and the people of Haven City witness it, therefore contributing to the people blaming Jack, and even more justification to his exile in the beginning of Jack 3. And once Jack 3 begins, whenever you use Dark Jack, you are actually temporarily invincible and much more deadly. However, whenever you leave the state, your health gets halved and you can't use certain abilities for a limited time. Then once you reach the mission you receive Light Jack, you suddenly enter Dark Jack permanently throughout the mission, making the player worry and believe that this is the end of Jack as we know him. But at the end, you reach the Oracle, who violently rips Jack out of his dark state. But now that Jack has returned to normal, he begins to die from fatigue. But the Oracle will say something along the lines of, No longer will you suffer. As you carry the darkness, you may now harbor the light, granting Jack the power of healing first instead of slowing time. 
then Dark Jack returns to his regular Jack 3 style, sort of nerfing its power as a gameplay mechanic, as well as adding to the story element of balance in Jack as a character. To be honest, I could make an entire full length video on this stuff, but those are just some thoughts that I had revisiting the trilogy. So we finally finished the Triple Game Box special. Hey, hey look, look at us. us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Who'd have thought? Not me. Not me. But yeah, doing this trilogy was a big challenge, but it was such a blast. And I thought I could get this out before the end of the year. That was cute. But anyways, what did you guys think of the trilogy? And did you guys like the precursor twist or did you guys hate it like I used to? Maybe like and subscribe. But I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed.